The Monotonous Corporation and their new idea to construct a true electrified six-car Hyperloop for us or something similar. This is an old proposal from Elon Musk, who promised that it would be as simple as putting an air hockey table inside a tube back in 2013. Various companies piled on over the next decade to try to make the idea a reality, all with varying degrees of success. Hey everyone, and welcome to Tesla News, where we bring you the newest and best updates about Tesla and Elon Musk. For daily videos, please consider subscribing to our channel. Now in 2022, both Elon Musk and his boring firm are promising that a full-scale Hyperloop test will take place this year, seemingly out of nowhere. But what is a Hyperloop exactly? Opinions on the Hyperloop range from an absurd pipe dream to the future of transportation, and because no operational Hyperloop system has ever been created, it may go either way. So let's try to figure out what's going on with the Hyperloop and see if Elon can pull it off or if he'll simply prove his naysayers wrong. Let's start at the beginning with Elon Musk's Hyperloop white paper, which has been both praised and criticized. Alpha Elon Musk presented this proposal for a super high-speed train in a low-pressure tube on the Tesla website in 2013. He was furious because California had approved a new high-speed bullet train, which at the time was one of the slowest and most expensive high-speed rail lines in the world. So Elon Musk decided to create a better product and demonstrate how it's done. Is it possible to create a fifth mode of transportation? What's next after planes, trains, automobiles, and boats? Elon Musk believes he had the answer in 2013. Elon Musk could be the first to coin this phrase, but he's not the first to think of something like this. In fact, I believe the concept of a high-speed train in a sealed tube dates back to the 1800s. The Beach Pneumatic Transit was a short-lived test experiment in New York City in 1870. It worked on the same idea as the ancient pneumatic tubes that were used in office buildings to deliver printed messages. The carriage is forced through the tube by an excess of pressure, as if it were a spitball fired from a straw. Because there would be too much friction between the column of high-velocity air and inside the tube, Elon ruled this out for a scaled-up human transit system in his white paper. The present Hyperloop, on the other hand, functions in the opposite way. The capsule can go ahead without resistance since there is no pressure in the tube. While it's easy to think a Hyperloop as a vacuum tube, it's not completely devoid of pressure. Elon Musk claims that maintaining a pure vacuum over hundreds of miles of tubes with dozens of station gates and possibly thousands of pods moving through would be too difficult. Elon's idea was to install an electric compressor fan on the front of the capsule, which would concurrently transmit high-pressure air from the front to the back, resulting in a low-friction suspension system. This is known as an air bearing, and it works on the same concept that allows a puck to flow around on an air hockey table. The capsule, or puck, rather than a tube, would provide its own air cushion in this situation, which is crucial in order to keep the tube as basic and low cost as feasible. The capsule would feature a massive battery pack to power the compressor fan, similar to Tesla automobiles, and the Hyperloop would be driven by electric motors as well. The capsules would be launched from a starting point to a high subsonic velocity using a linear induction motor implanted in the track, and every 70 miles, the capsule would pass over another motor for a reboost. Only around 1% of the overall track would require these linear motors, according to Elon, but the tube is by far the most expensive portion of the whole thing. Elon Musk estimated that the Hyperloop tube connecting Los Angeles and San Francisco would cost several billion dollars in 2013. So in today's money, factoring in inflation, supply chain, and all other nightmares, it would cost in the tens of billions of dollars to come. Not that Elon Musk doesn't have it, but for the same amount of money he's raised to buy Twitter.com, he probably could have built the Hyperloop tunnel. The most notable distinction in the original Hyperloop was the use of magnetic levitation instead of the air hockey table premise. The same force that repels magnets permits the Virgin Hyperloop capsule to float while hanging from above on a track, as if you tried to push the north poles of two magnets together. To Virgin's credit, they did build a 500-meter-long test version of their Hyperloop tube in 2017, and they built a test pod called XP-1 and conducted several hundred tests of the levitation system, vacuum tube airlock, and propulsion. The XP-1 reached a top speed of 240 miles per hour in the vacuum tube thanks to its array of four propulsion engines and over 3,000 horsepower. Virgin was ready to put people in their pods by 2020. The XB2 was the first Hyperloop pod to transport human passengers. The experimental pod appeared to be a cutout chunk from the body of a private jet, most likely the one that Richard Branson had grown tired of. But in November 2020, two Virgin employees were rocketed through the 500-meter test tube at a top speed of 107 miles per hour. 
Virgin Hyperloop's grandiose vision of the future, which would connect cities and revolutionize transportation, was only discussed by early 2021. Virgin Hyperloop had laid off half of its workforce by early 2022 and said that it will no longer utilize the Hyperloop to transport people, instead deciding to use it to convey freight. According to Virgin, this adjustment in strategy is due to a global supply chain issue. Elon also wants to use rocket ships to transport people across the ocean, but that's a separate video. Now, Elon Musk frequently makes claims on Twitter that are not supported by facts, but in this case, the Boring Company's official Twitter account followed up Elon's post with an even greater announcement, announcing that, quote, full-scale Hyperloop testing will begin later this year. What does this imply? In theory, this implies the Boring Firm will have something operational that is quite comparable to what Virgin Hyperloop created in 2017, namely a full-size test tube with a working pod. In terms of testing and human trials, it would still be well behind the now-defunct Virgin project, but it would only be the second full-scale functional Hyperloop ever built. That isn't a minor accomplishment. Everything else is still up in the air. We don't know if the Boring Company is still utilizing Elon's old white paper, or if they've built something new. Will the Boring capsule continue to levitate using air hockey, or will they switch to magnets? We also have no idea if the Boring Firm is still using Elon's old white paper, or if they've constructed anything new which is more essential than any of the other technical details. The challenge with gaining government infrastructure money for a project like this is that it has never been done before. After tens or even hundreds of billions of dollars have been spent to develop it, we'll have to take the word of some crazy rich guys that it truly does what it's meant to do. Politicians do not want to risk government money on this, and I'm confident the majority of taxpayers do not want to see it either. Typically, a municipality will pay a contractor a substantial sum of money to build a subway, light rail, or whatever, and then the city will recoup the money by collecting fares from riders. Thus, the first actual Hyperloop may be developed under similar circumstances. If Elon Musk went to the state of California, or somewhere, and told them that he was going to pay for the entire project, and all they had to do was give him permission to start digging, it would be a tough sell and a major risk for him. However, even if Elon Musk spends $40 or $50 billion to acquire a website, he'll still have between $200 and $250 billion left over to build an ultra-fast vacuum train. Or perhaps he goes somewhere else totally to experiment with the Hyperloop. It would be much easier to introduce a disruptive new infrastructure technology in a country with more autocratic admiration and fewer regulation. All Elon has to do now is strike the perfect deal with the appropriate ruler or dictator, and he'll be digging with shovels in a week. This isn't a morally sound strategy, but it is a strategy nonetheless. So this was all. Add your thoughts in the comment section below. Tell us what you think in the comment area below about where you believe the Hyperloop will go. Also, like, subscribe, and share our channel. We will see you soon in our next video, so be with us. And if you like this video, be sure to check out our other videos. Thank you so much for watching.